Daniel Hernandez. Daniel Hernandez is a journalist, blogger, and author whose work focuses on art, youth, subcultures, and music. He is currently editor of Vice Mexico and has previously worked at the Los Angeles Times and LA Weekly. In the last year, he's written a series of articles on the art scene in Mexico City for Art in America. And Daniel's book, Down and Delirious in Mexico City, was published in 2011 by Scribner, and it is described by music historian and author Josh Kuhn as Mexico City as seen from its quaking mosh pit. Daniel is a graduate of UC Berkeley and is a native of San Diego, California. Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, uh, Winton Bell Gallery staff, Ian Russell, and congratulations, Vincent, on your solo debut on the East Coast. I saw that. <laughs> and thank you, Monica Munoz, incredibly brave and courageous work. I, I, I was really stirred by it. Um, I'm going to start today by talking about uh, a film that I saw recently. Um, and I'm just going to pull up an image of it. This is a still from the film Heli. It is by Amad Escalante. He's a Mexican filmmaker. And um, it did well at Cannes this year. Uh, it, there was a director's award given to the, this filmmaker. Previously, he did something called Los, he did a film called Los Bastardos, uh, which was a depiction of an violent situation with an immigrant in Los Angeles. And this scene in particular um, uh, really caused a stir in the film press and in the headlines because it depicts in a single shot um, with some incredible special effects, I, we all assume, of, um, in which a man is castrated by fire while hanging by his bound hands from the ceiling of a living room as you can see here. And uh, in the scene, there are children playing video games and the TV right there. And uh, through that door, in a moment, um, a woman, I imagine the mother of this torturer, is, um, peeks in and kind of takes a look very casually at this uh, torture sequence that is occurring. Um, she's glancing uh, emotionless from the kitchen. Um, this is a, a drug war killing, uh, one of the more than 100,000 uh, by the most liberal or, or accurate uh, accounts and counts of the drug war violence in Mexico. Um, and it shows a sort of casual, everyday cotidianidad that we say in Mexico of the kind of violence that is occurring uh, in Mexico today. And uh, I wanted to um, emphasize and highlight the position of this man um, as he is being uh, abused and tortured because it directly reflects uh, one of the paintings in, in Vincent's show um, of a man who is, appears to be hanging like this. We'll come back to this um, and Next, I wanted to talk a bit about how I got introduced to Vincent's work. Um, in about, I think it was 2001, is that correct, Vincent? Yes. Where, where is it? No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There it is. This is how I was introduced to Vincent's work, and he'll be talking about it more, I think, in, in his presentation. Uh, this is uh, Kill the Pachuco Bastards. Uh, uh, this was a piece that appeared in the traveling exhibit, a very groundbreaking exhibit, called uh, Chicano Visions, uh, Painters on the Verge, um, which was organized in part by Chich Marin. And um, I think, in my personal opinion, this is, well, one of the most important or significant paintings to emerge from 
our generation and, 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 and in particular is one of the strongest pieces of work that, that I've seen um, in many years and, and uh, it shows as this, uh, the script here mentions the Zoot Suit Riots of 1943 centered in Los Angeles but which actually occurred in many cities across the United States which was um, an, an, an outburst, an eruption of violence towards Chicano zoot-suited pachucos um, initiated uh, and, and carried out largely by, uh, in many cases, by servicemen returning um, from, from World War II. This was when I first saw this piece, an incredibly impactful painting. It's very large and um, I felt when I first saw this that there was a painter my age who was speaking in my language. Um, even though it was a historical piece, this uh, display of, of violence, um, this excess, this over the top, uh, including the sexual violence of, of, of these rapes or attacks that are occurring in other corners, um, really sort of um, grabs the, the historical violence that we, f we felt in some way, in some way uh, ha that has been occurring around us uh, for generations, if, if, if you look at the whole scope of, of Chicano history. Um, Vincent's work, I think, uh, has, has always been uh, politically engaged and uh, politically aware. Um, but what I find so striking about what he does, and especially um, The Strangest Fruit Show, is that he takes these uh, incidents and these periods of conflict and of, and of outbursts of uh, racial hate and discrimination and places them um, in a contemporary framework um, with the use of, of models um, from his life. Uh, including friends and, and neighbors and, and people that have worked with him. Um, that's something that you'll see in the show. Um, as Vincent will explain, the, the, the pieces are depictions and referencing these uh, lynchings and forgotten erased lynchings of, of Mexicans in the Southwest using um, his own contemporaries. So um, playing off of that, uh, I wanted to mention a few other artists or, or show you some images that um, I dug out that um, I, I think play similarly with what Vincent has been doing um, and which, in which he does so well in this new, sh new show here at Brown. Um, one is uh, the work of a friend of ours, a friend of his, Oscar Magallanes. Um, this, I think, is a print and it's called The Fruit of NAFTA. And uh, Oscar is a, a Mexican-American um, printmaker and artist and illustrator in Los Angeles. Um, this piece, these are pieces, I should say, by Marta Pacheco. She is a Mexican painter and illustrator. She's based in Guadalajara. And she recently had a show at the Modern Art Museum in Mexico City. Um, what Marta does, and uh, similar to what Vincent does, is she takes archival material, um, oftentimes forensic evidence from, and, and I will be showing some, some tough images here. Um, uh, my ethic, I think, is to confront audiences with this uh, type of imagery. She takes um, forensic evidence and paints it in this, again, very hyper-figurative, realistic fashion. That's a detail of that same piece. Also a hanging person. And my apologies for these being so small here. Um, so when they asked me to speak today, I, 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 I thought about the kinds of artists that I could um, bring together and, and compare and show you um, the way that Vincent's work um, deals with this kind of uh, violence and representations of violence. What Marta Pacheco does is she um, 
And similarly with Teresa Margoyes, who's an artist some of you might be familiar, um, she takes uh, forensic materials or um, broken ev evidence from um, drug, uh, drug war scenes in Mexico and um, uh, pr produces uh, sculpture um, that kind of directly and really violently forces a viewer to confront um, the, the remnants and the effects of, of, the, of the drug war and the violence in Mexico. Um, for instance, Marta Pacheco did something called um, Cards for Cutting Cocaine, and uh, she, would take, she would go to parties and pass these out, and upon them she would place uh, photographs of execution victims and pass these out at art parties in Mexico City where cocaine circulates like, uh, you know, candy. Um, uh, what Martha does is she she works in in the in the media that Vincent works in, which is canvas and oil, and, and painting. Um, now going back to uh, Heli, I wanted to show you um, uh, the the parallel that I was unable to resist in making. Um, today after I saw the first pieces of, of Vincent's work. Every day in Mexico, um, the tabloids show pictures of the violence. Uh, whereas in the United States, uh, print media and news media routinely avoid any kind of depiction, of documentary depiction of violence related to um, conflict and warfare. In Mexico, every single day on street corners where old women and children pass, and we all pass, we are confronted with images um, such as these. These are contemporary, today, hanging men um, south of the border. Uh, these are drug war um, victims or agents, um, which are often, sh often seen in the back pages of newspapers, in print magazines, even on television until uh, recently the new government and, and the major media outlets um, came to an agreement where they would minimize the display of, of these um, gory and, and gruesome scenes. Um, this is a front page from the newspaper La Prensa. Um, the headline there says lynched. And uh, these are a couple other images um, from places such as Nuevo Laredo, um, Monterrey, Acapulco, um, showing these nameless victims. We don't know if they were criminals. We don't know if they were men who were simply picked up off the street and, and, and left with narco messages um, in order to make some kind of message or send some kind of message or threat to their enemies. Um, so frequently in Mexico, we are confronted with these forms of violence and these images, and we are little by little casually uh, desynthesized to them and to their impact. Um, and I wanted to make a parallel, and I, and I thought hard about this, and, and I was, as, as I saw Vincent's work and, 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 and these paintings um, showing these men in contemporary dress, hanging, um, referencing uh, this history, uh, which Monica explained to us, uh, this forgotten history of, of violence. Um, well, these kinds of uh, killings are happening today. They're happening today south of the border. And they're happening today as a direct result of the state-sanctioned uh, conflict and war, um, which is occurring in Mexico and which really has no end. Um, so these conflicts uh, and these casualties have been hung from bridges um, often after being tortured. Um, and they are images meant to communicate terror and dominance to the enemies of the killers and of the cartels. And so while US news outlets generally avoid displaying this gore and this spectacle, in Mexico, um, the papers are, again, routinely decorated with these photos of unidentified bodies, criminalizing the victim and sort of uh, acting as agents of the messengers of the, of the perpetrators of, of this violence. 
It is an everyday parade of uh, grotesque imagery. And I think it um, reminds me of, of, of the phenomenon that, um, that Vincent is uh, uh, depicting in, in his new work. Um, here's another image. Um, these are images often, for, for years, as, as I've grown accustomed to seeing them, um, they would depress me, they would frighten me, they would give me nightmares. Uh, as a reporter, I would often find myself going into um, El Blog del Narco, um, which is um, a clearinghouse of every single um, do documented uh, killing and execution in Mexico's drug war. Um, and just getting a kind of barrage of, of images of violence such as these which uh, completely dehumanize the victim and little by little begin to dehumanize the viewer. Um, so going back to, to this film in, in Heli and this scene, um, oops. right here. When this scene was occurring in, in the film, and I'm sitting there in Mexico City at the National Film Archive, and, and some people were walking out in other cities, in, in, in France and in Russia, and when they showed this film, people were so deeply offended and, um, and, uh, and frightened by the scene that, that they would leave, um, in which case they would have missed the capstone to this. Uh, this moment, which is when um, this man is hanged. And uh, I turned around and I took a look at the audience that I was watching this film with, and it was mostly young people, university students, and everyone was blank, um, witnessing something that has become every day in Mexico. And um, I, I try not to lose the shock and lose the, the sense of terror, because when you do that, you kind of lose all sense with, with what is occurring. Um, this is an incredibly moving and incredibly shocking uh, a film, and uh, this man, by most accounts, is, is innocent, um, as, the, as, as he is presented in the film, caught up in, in, a, in a terrible situation and, and fueled by his na naivety. Um, Here's another still from the film here, sorry. Um, so I wanted to um, argue with you today that uh, these scenes of violence that Vincent um, depicts in his work and uh, Monica is dealing with in, in her research are ongoing and they reflect the, the terror and the violence that we are uh, witnessing and in some ways even engaged with in a globalized world. Uh, the violence in Mexico may not be a result of, is not a result of, of racial hatred and, and racial discrimination and strife. It is, it is a result of a state-sanctioned, U.S.-sanctioned conflict that is affecting all of us in one way or another. Um, in Mexico City, and in many cities in Mexico, we, we don't deal with scenes of uh, grotesque and brutal violence, but we are delivered them. We are, we are fed these images in, in, in a way that makes us all um, complicit with, with, with their carrying out, um, but not in the United States. In the United States, you are um, protected from these images. Um, your uh, we, uh, media viewers in, in the United States don't have to confront this violence and don't have to deal with it. And all we get here on this side are numbers and figures and statements by politicians. Um, this kind of work, Vincent's work, Amar Escalante's work, Marta Pacheco's work, and, and the work of others, um, I think is an invitation to um, confront uh, uh, the, the policies and the principles and, 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 and the ideologies that manufacture this violence and, and permit it to continue. Um, uh, I move back and forth across the border um, uh, with privilege and there are many other Mexicans and Mexican-Americans who move back and forth across the border uh, out of necessity 
Um, either way, um, I think we are all uh, involved in one way or another um, in, in, in the continuation of, of this violence. Um, so I, I wanted to um, make that uh, comparison and, 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 and share with you um, the idea that uh, while the racial violence and strife um, that fueled the, the lynchings of Mexicans uh, in the Southwest in the past is gone, uh, similar uh, principles about the, um, como se dice, the, the, the uselessness, the wasting of, of Mexican bodies, of Mexican men, of brown men, uh, continues to this day south of the border, in part by the fueling and, and the feeding of the illegal narcotics market uh, in the United States. Um, that was the, the parallel and, and the comparison that uh, I, was, I was forced to make myself looking at Vincent's work and absorbing it into the context and, and the reality that, that I live now. Um, this violence is, is ongoing and, and it is uh, directly tied to uh, uh, policies that uh, permit militaries and, and governments to engage uh, violently with populations. Um, uh, so I wanted to keep my talk in today um, short and um, open it up um, to questions or comments. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's obviously used because that sells, right? The right. The newspaper needs to sell. You don't need people talking about it. Uh, <laughs> but it sells. And so what does that tell you about the fact that these gruesome you know, pictures, the ones that are the most gruesome, actually, are the ones that are selling? Not that I want to make necessarily that presumption, but mm -hmm. that's what it seems to suggest, which mm -hmm. shows. Well, I think that um, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's getting to a, a question about uh, the consumption of violence and, and why we're attracted to violence and why audiences are attracted to gore and, 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 and to um, gruesome representations of, of other people's deaths. I don't know particularly how, how to answer that, but I think that um, Mexico, within Mexico and within Mexican culture, um, there is what a lot of people say call an intimacy with death um, or a kind of um, the closer you keep death in a way the more protected you are the, clo the closer you keep death to yourself in a way the more protected you are from it and that gets to why La Prensa sells so many newspapers and to why Saint Death, the cult of the Santa Muerte is such a popular um, a religious icon, and, and why Day of the Dead, which is um, coming up, is, is probably the most popularly celebrated holiday in Mexico and increasingly in the United States. Um, in Mexico, there is a, an everyday play, an awareness of death um, that I think directly contrasts with the, 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 the tradition in the United States of, of avoiding death and avoiding the topic of death or, or keeping death at a distance. Um, I see it also in, not only in the coverage of, of the violence in Mexico as, as it continues, but also in popular customs such as funerals and uh, obituaries and, and the way people remember people who have, who have passed. Um, in the United States, death is treated, I feel, coldly and, and with, and with and with the distance and, and with almost um, a desire to, to barely even touch it or deal with it. And, and in Mexico, 
funerals are themselves spectacles of um, emotion and, and uh, outbursts. Um, so I think that gets to um, a, a, a question of culture and a, and a question of what sells in, in the media. And this is a debate that we deal with every day in the news media, also south of the border, because we have to ask ourselves how how we cover a conflict without losing its, it, its, its context and how we cover a conflict without losing touch with, with the victims and, 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 and how it affects everyday life. Um, so, so yes, I think there is a fine line to play. You don't want to uh, play into the, the methods and play into the goals of the killers and, and the executioners, but you also want to keep documenting and you want to um, document the the aftermath and the, and, the, and the violence that's inflicted on the victims and on the survivors. So that is a, a question that gets to uh, political motivations as well, because increasingly as media outlets in Mexico also begin to self-censor, we are, we are reducing the, the flow of these images um, in our daily lives. And by that, the question now to us is, so are we losing touch with, with what is actually happening in the country? Mm-hmm. Good point. Um, yes, so uh, after the conquest, there were instances and, and there uh, were uh, uh, highly detailed uh, uh, records of, of how the indigenous people um, were, were killed um, during the conquest, as there were in Aztec codices that survived or that were done or completed after the conquest, in which um, both the dismembering and the executions of in indigenous soldiers and, and uh, indigenous men, women, and children, really, as well as the arrival of smallpox and, and, and how disease killed um, 10 times more than um, swords and lances. Um, I don't, I, I mean, over the years and over the centuries, this has been the kind of brutal and, and uh, gory and uh, detailed depictions of the violence that has occurred in Mexico have been part of everyday life. Um, but at the same time, I feel that there has been a, um, a transition in, in how that these images were, were used. I mean, by the Spaniards, they were used as a, as a record of their conquest, as a record of their success and as their victory. And by the Mexicans, by the Mexica, these images were used also as a record, but as a record of their tragedy and as a, and as a record of their defeat. Um, so over the years is the rise of kind of a popular cultural figure of death, La Catrina and now Santa Muerte. Um, I think it's been a way for, for Mexican uh, consumers of cultural production to keep um, that death and that violence in their um, scope of vision, um, permitting, I think, people um, to, in a way, value their life more or value the everyday more, um, and also, in a way, to kind of count blessings. Um, uh, there's the sense in some parts of Mexico that uh, you are a moving target. Um, if you're a male, if, if you are um, a, a male in your 20s and 30s, I mean, you have um, just as high a chance of, of dying in, in an accident in some places as you are of, of being killed. Um, so it's, it's a really interesting um, point and discussion to be making um, how these depictions of death have morphed over the years and, and the kinds of ways that we're dealing with them, with them today. Yes. I, know what the I thought the, uh, the artists who handed out postcards with the pictures had a cocaine flowing party. It was an incredible uh, act. Right. Do you know what the response was from these people? It's a really good question. I think that happened in the 
in the mid 90s. Um, Teresa Margolles uh, uh, is a really interesting artist because some of her recent work still deals really directly with um, the, the, the effects of the drug war um, in, in people's lives and often when they, when they don't want to see it. Uh, but she also kind of moves into darker, more morbid territory. Um, one of the first pieces that I saw myself in Mexico City when I first um, arrived there after uh, college um, looking for a scene in a community of creative people was she um, gathered us all in a gallery that was completely empty. Um, the, the, the grates of the service door opened and a cement truck um, let its chute down and immediately cement started coming into the gallery space and trapping us in the corners. And uh, within a couple moments, we had been informed that the water was, um, the, the cement was mixed with water that had been used to wash corpses in the Mexico City morgue. And uh, another piece that she had done, um, uh, I think a little bit after that, is she um, filled a room and blew bubbles in it with bubble machines and, and the art viewer walks through this room and then is informed that the bubbles are made with water used to wash corpses in the morgue. Um, so she is a, a violent artist herself that um, forces us to confront things that people uh, don't usually want to, want to confront. attention to you know these drug battles and the sort of the messages that are being sent out by these different cartels and then the absence of images of violence um, for example for the, the feminicidio more specifically mm -hmm. in Ciudad Juarez where you see hundreds of women being were mm -hmm. mostly maquilladora workers mm -hmm. disappearing right? right and there's a sort of lack of public dialogue of that and so I mean how can we make sense of the sense in which, I mean, especially to think about gender mm -hmm. more specifically, in which brown male bodies, that there's a... a are okay to display. Are okay right. to display, right. that there's, you know, a, a, a real troubling with being able to deal with, mm -hmm. with dead women. Right. Um, and then the kind of violence that does to just silence that, that history. Right, exactly. Especially that violence. Exactly. Well, um, I mean, that's an excellent point. I mean, the, the femicidios in Ciudad Juarez um, were really kind of at the forefront of the dialogue in Mexico over violence and the impunity and the lack of justice and even the lack of investigation and the kind of the blith dismissal of the outcries for justice for the victims of the femicidios in Ciudad Juarez um, 10 years ago. Uh, we know that it's still ongoing. I mean, we know that these young, innocent uh, maquiladora workers are still being snatched up and, and taken. And it was something that, um, for instance, in the literary form, Roberto Bolaño deals with in his book 2666, um, which I've just completed um, reading the primary section, which we were talking about earlier, um, in which he, he shows a systematic um, description of each victim and how they were found, what they were wearing, what her name was, um, how long she had been in Ciudad Juarez, what town from the interior of Mexico she was from, what she had been doing that day. Um, that, I think, is an incredible uh, testimony and witnessing um, that, it, that occurs in the literary form that I think is, is really unmatched in, in many other art forms. I mean, it's so difficult to grapple with just the scope of the violence, the amount of victims, and the amount of women who are silenced and who are erased, and, um, and, and in particular, the really unjust and, and, and the, real, uh, the truly kind of morally offensive um, lack of awareness and, and lack of um, motivation on the part of the authorities to do anything about it. And, and that's something that, again, is ongoing and, again, is highly frustrating. And when you think about it or when you, I try to my, wrap my brain around it, I, I, I'm just, I, I feel like I'm walking in circles and can't even um, uh, come to terms with the scope of the violence. Um, that is something that 
we still haven't seen justice. And, and the, the, the victim's relatives will still march from Juarez to Chihuahua and will still, um, in Mexico City, will still put the um, crosses with the names of some victims in the plazas or in Tijuana on the border where my family is from. Uh, the crosses are still all there, the white crosses of the migrants who die in their attempts to cross into the United States. Um, I still don't know what, what I can do both either as a journalist or as a creative person to, to um, make some sense of that or make some kind of uh, uh, justice in the forms that we work with for the victims of, of that violence. But it is interesting the way that female victims are, are not paraded and are not displayed in the flow of images in the public sphere, but the male victims are. And the male victims are often um, faulted for their own deaths. Um, uh, president Felipe Calderón, the, the last president of Mexico, and, and some of his high, function, uh, high uh, people in his cabinet would often dismiss victims and say, well, um, you know, and kind of reflective of a broader um, thing that is often said in Mexico, oh, well, they, were, they must have been involved in something, is often the line. Like, they must have done something to deserve such a gruesome death. And uh, often cases, and, and at least a few times where people have gone in and investigated um, how a person was killed, in many cases, it is just a person randomly picked up and kind of their body is used as a message, um, as a political message to enemies. And that is uh, uh, really difficult to, um, to deal with uh, because it shows the kind of randomness and, and, and again, the lack of empathy for, for victims and, and especially for their families. Um, Well, I mean, I, I, I don't want to, uh, we were t joking earlier that we were going to need drinks after this talk because it was going to deal with such heavy subjects. Uh, but I don't want to leave you with a negative impression um, about Mexico in general. But I think that there is an, a need and a desire, at least among those of us who live there, to um, ask people in the United States or to remind um, our neighbor and, and, and that, that 
the these this, these modes of violence and these mechanics of of, of death are ongoing and um, it's something that I mean I moved to Mexico in late 2007 and the the drug war really escalated and kind of climaxed you could say in 2010 2011 um, and now the media line is that it's Mexico's moment and Mexico is the land of opportunity and Mexico is is kind of back in back in action and, and it's a place to go and, and it is it is a place to go it's a wonderful place and it's an incredible place and it's an incredibly rich place um, but to ignore or to minimize um, the the ongoing war because it is still a war I, I think is is hurtful um, to Mexico and I think is is as violent as some of the policies that that permit the um, the, the drug cartel war to continue um, so I, I don't have a solution um, but from my perspective coming to you from south of the border as a as a as a American raised um, Mexican person um, when I look at Vincent's work I am reminded um, that uh, these kinds of images and 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 um, looking forward to Vincent introducing them is something that is contemporary to me and is something that I feel um, could, is contemporary in that sense to all of us um, because it is a, a, a tragedy that um, implicates um, not just two countries but an entire world. I mean, what kind of uh, principles are we promoting in? in the, the, the prohibition of, of narcotics that will never seem to be um, out of reach for people. Um, having said that also, um, I wanted to um, uh, say that um, just Vincent's work has over the years um, uh, moved me and, um, and in particular his, his uh, true kind of love and affection for his subjects is, is apparent and is apparent I think even in, in this set of work um, which shows um, subjects contorted by, by violence and death and, and yet there is like a, um, a love or a reverence um, for their lives and, and for what, what they represent. Um, so with that, um, thank you Vincent and I look forward to hearing uh, what you, your thoughts.